Hi guys. I'm running a couple of errands and I figured that I would make a video for you guys. First I need to get some gas and then I want to stop by Bath and Body Works and just see. There was this candle that they had and I ended up getting a coupon so I might go by there and grab this candle that I've had my eye on because I don't think it's gonna be around for very long. It's one of those special collaborations that they did with somebody I don't remember. I'll show a photo if I end up buying it. But it smelled really good and I refuse to pay full price for Bath & Body Works candles. They're just not worth it. I'm not spending $26 on a damn candle at Bath & Body Works. So um, that's what's going on. But I want to talk about two things. First, I want to talk about Laura Fritz. I covered Laura a couple of months ago and she is back on TikTok uploading. She ended up stepping away from TikTok in order to protect her kids and she has come back and is uploading content about herself, doing um, random facts. She did like a random facts about me video and of course, as people do, they started asking where is the content featuring her kids, which let's talk about that for a quick second because that is so invasive and inappropriate to ask somebody you are not entitled to see videos of people's children that's not an entitlement that comes with following somebody on social media by the way just because you follow an influencer who uploads lifestyle content and maybe early on they did vlogs showing their kids and stuff that's not something that you automatically get all of the time. I can't stand this entitlement that some people have online. But either way, she did respond to the person asking this question and she re, you know, basically like re-announced why she took her kids off TikTok and her reasoning is very straightforward to the point and she wants her kids to have a normal childhood. She doesn't want her kids to have to worry about people watching them online and strangers coming up to them in random locations saying, oh, I follow you on TikTok. Like that's just such a weird thing to subject your kids to. And she gets that and she's changing. And I love to see growth and change from people talk about why i took my kids off tiktok and i know people are gonna say you don't owe anyone an explanation and i know that but i'm just gonna talk about it for a second no hate to this comment by the way there's just a ton of people i guess that missed the announcement i could talk about this for like an hour but basically what it comes down to is continuing to grow up on tiktok is not what's best for my kids lena's getting older it started out as cute funny little spontaneous conversations and we never expected to gain a following whatsoever like i don't think that anybody does necessarily but i quickly knew from the beginning this is not going to be something that we keep up forever it's just not sustainable so yeah basically i want her and sam to have a regular childhood i want lena's classmates to love her for her and for her to be able to just be a kid, not worry about social media. She's gonna be a teenager one day. I'm sure she'll worry about social media then, but she doesn't need to do that now. Also, this is such a personal decision to our family. I have a lot of friends and mutuals that choose to share their families on here, and this has nothing to do with them. I'm still leaving up the videos for now. I never said that I was gonna scrub them from all my social media, even though some people would like me to. I don't regret our time on TikTok. Lena and I loved making videos together and she still watches them every night. I'm not, I'm not leaving the videos up so that they can make money like some people have speculated. If you know anything about the creator fund, it's hardly any money, so that is not why. And when we left, I really didn't anticipate coming back to post my own stuff, so if you appreciate that, thank you. <laughs> I've had fun doing it. I don't know how regularly I'm gonna post um, I really have no idea, but yeah, that's all. Yeah, when it comes to people switching up their content, like I am here for that. Um, what is there to dislike about somebody making the choice to protect their kids from social media? So I wanted to hit on that in the beginning of the video. 
I think it's really amazing that she made that decision and I'm glad that she's sticking by it because a lot of people know like yeah people people enjoy watching kids online like that is such a weird concept but it would be really easy for her to say, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and put my kids back online because people are asking for it and that's how I get views or, you know, whatever she wanted to come up with. So I really like that she's sticking by her um, decision. Let me back in and then we're going to talk about everyone's favorite menace, Alicia Dougherty. I feel so nice outside today. Is it better when I have a little more light? Maybe, maybe not. Oh well. So the first video that I want to talk about that Alicia did is she did a cringy dance with one of her kids talking about when people tell me to stop spoiling my kids. I feel like my mic looks so stupid. I'm just gonna hold it. If you guys get distracted by that, sorry, not sorry. But the problem with her is her version of spoiling them is stupid fast fashion that creates an insane amount of waste. The stupid challenges that she does with the food that ends up going to waste, like the nacho pool, buying them a bunch of cheap plastic crap that ends up in the landfill after you know literally some of her kids probably don't even play with that stuff for more than a day um you, putting their entire lives on social media these are the things like people aren't saying oh don't buy anything for your kids people are saying maybe don't show them that money equals happiness because these kids are going to get out into the real world once you've done blown through all the money that you've made on social media because your relevancy is fading, it is fading very quickly and her views say so, these kids aren't going to know what to do with themselves because they're not going to have the money and all of this kind of stuff to buy a bunch of junk to try to pacify, quote, what happiness is. Like, it's just such a tangled web of bullshit that she's doing nobody is saying don't ever buy your kids stuff or don't you know take them to nice places like nobody is saying that people are saying one stop creating waste two you have the financial means to give these kids a better diet than what you do and number three stop creating just nonsensical content that invades their privacy embarrasses them and doesn't protect them from creeps on the internet. You're allowing the kinship girl to do God knows whatever on TikTok. I have been sent some of her TikToks recently. She is mouthing words to songs that are extremely explicit, wearing revealing clothing on TikTok. It is appalling. And I look at this shit and I'm like, where is Alicia? Watch your kids. What are they doing? Why are they wearing next to nothing on TikTok and using songs that are completely explicit when they are 14 years old? You're supposed to be the kinship caregiver and you are not giving a fucking ounce of care. Now, Alicia knows that outrage marketing is going to get people to keep watching her. And the nacho pool proves that. I've already covered the nacho pool and all of its nastiness previously. But that video right now is sitting at almost 5 million views. So by doing disgusting, stupid shit, it gets her views. And at the end of the day, she cares about views because what do views equal? Money. And I think we've seen this for a while with the outrage marketing aspect of the Doherty Dozen. But Alicia is definitely going to continue with the outrage marketing because by doing something as stupid and insane as that nacho pool was, it gave her almost 5 million views on that video and we're not even talking about the YouTube views. Now keep in mind, Alicia has 6 million followers over on TikTok and the reason that I say that her relevancy is fading aside from when she does stuff that outrages people, she had a recent video over the last week only get 54 comments on it. With 6 million followers, that says a lot because that is such a minuscule amount of 
engagement. And yeah, sure, views and likes, those count as well. But if you're collecting 54 comments on a video that has been up for a week, that tells me that people don't really have a whole lot to say to you anymore. And hey, before anyone tells me what I already know, my views fluctuate. I have videos that totally tank and I have videos that do decent. But YouTube isn't my job. I'm here to just talk about whatever the fuck I feel like talking about. And if y'all want to watch, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. At the end of the day, I have said many times, YouTube is my hobby. It will always be my hobby. Um, I am very grateful that it gives me a little bit of extra income. But as far as it paying my bills to keep a roof over my head, that's not what my YouTube is for. Um, so either way, her relevancy is fading. She made some nasty ass Star Wars floats. And, you know, floats are supposed to be with soda. Do we agree on that or do we disagree? Because she made it with some nasty green Hawaiian punch and vanilla ice cream with sprinkles. That makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit, if I'm being honest. She makes a lot of nasty stuff, but I cannot imagine drinking green juice with sprinkles and vanilla ice cream. Not on my worst day. And of course, on her most recent Wegmans haul, she bought you know, 5,000 paper plates, all of the fucking ice cream, like all of the ice cream in the entire aisle. Let's just go buy one box of every single ice cream bar that they have here because my kids survive on chips, soda, and ice cream bars, evidently. Um, you know, it's just rinse and repeat. It's... It's giving boring, it's giving nap time, and I'm not here to watch nap, nap time content, but I am very opinionated when it comes to her toxicity. And I received a comment on one of my other videos that someone said, you have created a community that hates Alicia Doherty. That's a pretty bold claim. And I think that you're making me a lot more important than I actually am, but I thank you for that. My channel is very small. There are bigger creators that talk about Alicia. There are people over on TikTok that get really good views when they talk about Alicia. I'm a small fish. I am an opinionated fish, but I am a small fish. And I have a community that recognizes bullshit when they see it. And it just so happens that Alicia Doherty's entire presence is bullshit. And that's why my community is interested in what she is doing. And I try to not get really repetitive or anything like that. I have been in the past and I probably will be again in the future. But as far as creating a community that hates her, I'm not sure if that's necessarily true because I haven't polled every single person that watches my Doherty Dozen content. But if I was going to say something, I would say that they hate the stuff that she does. And anyone with a brain hates the stuff that she does. Because what is the woman doing that is good? She cannot even protect kinship kids that are there fucking temporarily. And if you want to sit there and try to say that putting roof over a child's head and feeding them and clothing them is doing the Lord's work, I would encourage you to pull yourself together and recollect your thoughts because that is called the bare bones of being a parent. If you consider that as noteworthy and being a good parent, I disagree. I call that being the bare bones minimum. That is what is expected. That is what you sign up to do. When you become a parent, you realize that you have to house, feed, and clothe the child. But good parents protect their kids. They don't exploit them on the internet. They don't overshare medical information. They don't um, tell strangers on the internet where their kids go to school. They don't tell strangers on the internet where they live. They don't build toxic parasocial relationships with creepy people. That is what good parents do. 
So I think I have a community that hates bullshit and Alicia Doherty is selling bullshit. So either way, those are going to be my thoughts for now. Um, if I get the candle at Bath and Body Works, I'll throw a little video or something right here. But either way, it's not that important. But for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.